everyone welcome to my channel my my name my name is Tracy <laughs> I'm not afraid of color and today I want to show you three different ways of creating masks for your projects and why you might even want to create a mask for your project so let's go ahead and get started so what I have here is I have some different supplies this is a four inch mint tape then I've got a Gina K masking magic and this here is some transfer tape for my Cricut that I don't use anymore. And you get a pretty big roll. And this is my favorite, by the way. And I'll show you that one last. But I'm just going to show you here quickly how I do masking with in any one of these products. So I don't not recommend any of them. They're all great. Uh, the Gina K Masking Magic you can reuse a few times. Uh, the downfall is that you want to make sure that your ink is completely dry on there, especially if you're going to do any ink blending. So I'm going to be using archival ink because it is waterproof, and most of the ink blending that I would do would be use a, a water-based ink. And I'm just going to stamp it down onto the masking magic and basically this is just peel off paper and the stamp doesn't have to be perfect. You just you have to be able to see it well enough to um, cut around it. So we're going to set that one aside and we're going to let it dry and I'll put a little kitty back. And these, by the way, are all my Technique Junkie stamps. Uh, it's a lot of my favorites. So, you know, I thought I would showcase slash highlight my Technique Junkie stamps while showing you how to do this, these masking methods. So this one uses the mint tape. Now, I'll tell you, I found the mint tape tricky in that um, I stuck it down to a piece of paper and it, it wouldn't come off. <laughs> so, um, you know, I left the fighting with that off camera, but I'm just going to go ahead and stamp him down because maybe I want him, but I don't want to use his words or, you know, I don't care if the words get covered in the colors Okay, so then I'm just going to tear that little piece of mint tape off. And I would say um, my recommendation mint tape would be for more standard like circles and ovals and maybe stars and stuff like that. A little bit more of a complex image. It, it doesn't really, doesn't cut out very easily. And if you don't stick it to a piece of paper, then you're cu stuck cutting it with sticky scissors. So if you can cut it with your... Um, if you can cut it with a die cut, you're in better shape. So let me just move my stuff off of here and I'm gonna have to apologize. Um, I apparently bumped my camera at some point, didn't see that for a lot of this, I'm only halfway in frame, but it's just stamping. And the point here is the materials we're using for the masks and why. So what I do here with this Cricut transfer tape is I will cut twice as much as I need. Now, why do I love this? Because I don't have to worry about ink smearing ever. Okay, I don't have to wait for the ink to dry. So what I'm doing is I'm just folding it half on itself and I'm leaving space and I'm cutting two pieces. So I'll take the first piece and I will, um, I do like to do this in my stamp platform because the paper likes to roll on you and you know, I don't really want it to roll because I want my image to be fairly um, normal. You know, if it kind of rolled and then you press down on it, you may get a bit of distortion in your image. And I haven't used this stamp before. I just got it and I absolutely love this stamp. You guys know me. That's just my personality. Um, I would look ridiculous in a tutu like a hippo, but you know what? I could still dream that I would look that cute in a tutu. <laughs> So again, I am stamping this down in archival. It doesn't really, you don't want a super wet ink for this because it, you don't want it to blur, 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 blur up. That's, I don't have a better word for it. You don't want it to kind of get bubbly up. You want it to be fairly crisp on there. So I've got the ink down and I'm not even going to let it dry. I'm going to take my second piece of transfer paper and this stuff's clear. That's the other cool part about it is clear. You can see underneath what you're working with. And I try to kind of match up the grid. You don't have to. It doesn't matter. Um, I don't know. There's just a little bit of a, 
obsessive compulsive need for me to get that on there straight <laughs> and not have the grids be wonky but hey you can let your grids wonk I, it's you know you be, you do you right so that was that easy now you notice i'm not doing any massive burnishing or anything because i don't want really to squish my ink out i'm just kind of pressing down and i'm going to cut those legs out and i'm going to cut I'm going to, you know, cut the words out too. And I just wanted to show you here, because I did most of the cutting off camera, how tiny of a space you can get in with this stuff because it's flexible. So you see how flexible that is? I can get in that teeny tiny space. I can trim off that excess without worrying about my paper tearing because it's plastic. So there we go, there we've got our mask. So let's now explore why we would need masks. Um, let me go ahead and cut these guys all up off camera. You see me putting him down on a piece of paper. Well, don't do that, at least not the paper I chose. This was just the back side of the transfer paper. Um, but yeah, it, it uh, stuck really badly to it. So uh, I will cut this mostly off camera um, I end up having to cut off his little fur ball on the tip of his hat because it's just too small to cut with this thin paper. But as thin as the paper is, it still has some thickness to it. So I've got him cut out and you see I've lost his little fur ball, but that's okay because it's black in the stamp. So once I have him stamped down, it won't really matter. Um, but you see how I can get those tiny spaces with that plasticky stuff. And this is the Gina K uh, Masking Magic, and I'm just checking to make sure it's dry, um, mostly so I don't smear ink all over my hands. And I will cut him out, and of course, when you're cutting out, you want to cut to slightly the inside of that black line. See, there's me adjusting my camera, and that's why I end up being halfway off camera, not even realizing it. But again, it's just stamping. So we'll start with little cat here. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to find, I'm going to get my stamping platform and I'm going to find a background stamp that I might want to use. So um, one reason to mask is because you don't want the background all over your character. So I'll lay down my um, stamp my pull out my stamping platform and lay down my paper into the platform and i will grab the background piece that i'm going to use well first i'll stamp him out and i do want to use the platform and i'm going to mask off the words and the way i mask off the words is i just put some mint tape over the words and i'm so sorry you can't see that um i put mint tape over the words and then um, get the ink down and then I clean off, then I pull up the mint tape. You don't want to accidentally lay the mint tape down into the, um, onto your picture. I've done it before, so I can say that from experience. So all I'm doing here is just taking little pieces of that mint tape and covering up the words. And... It doesn't take much, right? And you don't even necessarily have to do that. But on the particular background that I chose for this cat, it's a very, very busy background. And the words would just get buried in there. So could you, you know, cut them out and put them, you know, do a label type thing for the words? Sure you could, but would you want it right there? No, I want mine over to the left of my cat. So oh, that's one thing, you know, your stamps are yours, use them the way you want. And here, what you don't see me doing is after I've gotten my ink down, there we go. I pulled off that um, mask and threw it away immediately because, um, yeah, I will get it everywhere. It's very wet. And so I'm just stamping down my cat, making sure he's good and down because... Um, if I have to do a second stamping, I'll have to cover that spot again, and that's more chances for me to get black ink all over my fingers, so <laughs> I'd like to avoid that if I can. So, I've got him done, and all I want to do now is I just want to lay my mask down over him. And you do want to kind of heat set it. So I'm heat setting it with my heat tool, remembering that I'm using a mat there that will warp. So <laughs> moving it away from the mat. 
um, because I want, you know, I don't want to lift any of that ink. And here's where the struggle comes in. And you will see me just start to peel that. And then I'm going off camera. And I'll tell you that I spent probably 15 minutes picking that um, backing off of that mint tape. I was not happy <laughs> and I didn't want to show you but I did want to tell you because there's no point in you sitting there watching me pick so I've got it all picked off uh, I scraped and picked with tweezers did I lose my stickiness no not really so he's good and stuck down there and I could have left it in my stamping platform but I didn't and I'm choosing a background stamp here and this is the um, newsprint one from Technique Junkies. And you know what, folks, I'm going to tell you right now, I never get that thing right side up. When it looks right side up to me, it ends up upside down. It's crazy. See, I'm looking at it going, oh, that looks right. Yeah, that's probably right. Okay. I'm just going to set that on there and then I'm going to get out my stamping platform because, um, yeah, a big stamp like that is going to take a, quite a bit of pressure. And I'm just going to set it in the platform. And I'm just going to put my magnets just kind of on the outside edges. Kind of. Now remember, my mask is down already. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and ink that newsprint up. And I'm going to use some Catherine Puller in Midnight um, because I'm thinking I'm going to ink blend over this, but in the end I don't just because in interest of time, I'll do one with ink blending for you and kind of in kind of a hurry because I don't let the ink totally dry. <laughs> and so we do get a little smearing, but I want you to get an idea of why, why mask and what, what are some of the things that you can do when you're using masking. Now see with my mint tape, I got quite a bit of halo around Kitty. So I'm gonna do a couple more coats of that Catherine Puller and just press really good right in around where he is. Now I don't mind a little bit of halo. It's not a, not a horrible thing. Um, depending on what you know what results you're wanting um, for this one I a little bit is fine yeah we're good we'll we'll live with that little bit of halo right there oops guess who put the newsprint upside down oh no one will never notice after I ink blend or they will whatever <laughs> that's not the point of this video <laughs> So there now my cat is standing in front of an upside down newspaper and his little whiskers and everything are fine because they were already black in the first place. Okay, so let's do one with another background stamp and um, we'll, we'll do it with some colors. So I'm going to do kitty watching. No, bad idea. That Now that's going to get me kicked off of YouTube. <laughs> we'll just do the kitty watching. And I've grabbed my American flag. And that's also the, a Technique Junkies. All, all the stamps I'm using are from Technique Junkies, and I will link them below. Uh, this was from May of last year, I think. Um, really cool set, and I end up using a couple of them from this um, May release from last year. All right, so I'm going to go side to side first. I'm going to grab my uh, grab my kitty here. And yeah, I'm a little bit off camera, but you can see where I'm stamping him down. And I'm using my archival ink in case I want to ink blend. And plus I'm gonna be using a water-based ink on top. So I really don't want any running or smudging. Okay, I'm just having a little bit of a fight there with his eye area, getting it as dark as I want. Now, you know, you can go in and color these later. Um, you can color them before you mask them. It just really is completely up to you what your methods are. I would probably do my coloring last just because I might be thinking about what types of colors. So for this one, we're using the Gina K Masking Magic. And I'm just laying that mask down right on top of that kitty that you can't see because I'm off camera. I'm so sorry. Let me put my flag down here. 
And I'm going to do the stars portion in dress blues, and I'm doing the stripes in cranberry fizz. You can't see it, but I am. <laughs> So, uh, great colors. I like the Catherine Puller inks for this kind of thing because they're nice, vibrant colors. And they remind me of a flag. So, yeah. Perfect. All righty. Let me just clean that off a little bit here. Move my stamping platform. And then I'm just going to take my tweezers and I'm going to carefully peel my kitty away. Now, there you, if you keep the backing to this, and I can't find it right now, and you can put that back on the backing and, and get a couple more uses out of it. So there we go. There's our kitty sitting in front of the flag. I'm just going to put them on that piece of uh, Cricut transfer tape. All right, let's get our tutu, girl. I haven't used this one. So I've got this Hanging Stars um, basically border piece and then I've got the tutu gal and thinking I'm thinking I'm going to do portrait orientation but I decide in the end to do it landscape um, simply because the stars go far enough and then I'm going to grab my tutu stamp and I am going to leave the words I'm not going to mask them off I am kind of cleaning it off because I had used archival on it and I don't want to accidentally drop it on my white paper, which I end up smearing on anyway. And I'm stamping that down, making sure that I'm um, using archival again, of course, because I will be doing ink blending. And that's where the thing is, is getting in a hurry. I didn't let the ink dry completely. And so when we start doing some ink blending, we get a little bit of smudging, which is no fun. But that one stamped out perfectly the first time. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just find a spot and peel this up. And you see it's clear. And I'm going to lay it down right on top of the image. And you can see just a little bit of what I'm doing here. Doggone it. I think I forgot I was zoomed in. Durr. One of these days I'm going to get over this cold and not be so dingy. Um... Yeah, sure. <laughs> That's what they all say. All right, I've got my mask down. Covering tutu, girl. Now let me get my hanging stars. And I am going to take a little piece of mint tape and cover some of those words. Um, because I don't want stars, you know, messing up my words there. And I will go ahead and stamp those down in black as well with the uh, Catherine Puller, I think. Yeah. And let's go ahead and get that stamped down. And I believe it only takes one try. A little bit harder. Okay, there we go. Perfect. Now, I'm not going to take my mask off except for the tape. Because next thing I'm going to do is some ink blending. And I am going to first erase that one finger smudge. We won't talk about the other ones I got on there, but that one was pretty obvious. And it was kind of dry, so it was safe to erase it off. I'm just going to get my little blending mat out here. And just making sure that this foot's on there straight. Because it looks to me like I've got a little bit of a border on one side. So this stuff lifts up really easily now, if you're worried about it you can you know lay it against your skin or your clothes before you lay it down so I'm gonna grab the pucker up I'm gonna grab the holy trio of rainbow here which is pucker up cummerbund and chiffon and I'm just gonna start ink blending and of course you can't see the whole thing but that's not the point well it's kind of the point but not really uh, then I'm gonna go in with the cummerbund no, nah, I think I'll go in with the chiffon. And I'm, of course, blending partially into that uh, pucker up color, so I'm getting an orange out of that. Okay. And then we'll go in with the cummerbund so that I get a green and a blue. Now, if you wanted to, you could go thinner and you could do another layer of the pucker up at the bottom and you'd get also purple. But we're good with the five colors of the rainbow here. All right, here we go. And now here comes the big reveal. Pull up my mask. I'm going to pull it slowly so it doesn't rip my paper. 
here's why you want a mask. Now, isn't that stinking cool? <laughs> I just love it. Now you just trim and embellish as you normally would. So folks, um, this was a just a kind of comparison on masking and why you would want to do it and how to do it. Um, I hope that you are enjoying so far this basic series. Um, it is, I just want to be able to have people be able to refer back to other videos. So we use the, and my favorite, of course, was the, um, my uh, Cricut transfer paper. Uh, but we used also the Gina K Masking Magic. And you see, you can just stick this right back down onto there and stick it back in the, same bag as the stamp. I oftentimes when I get a new stamp and I think I'm going to want to mask it, I will go ahead and make a mask right away and put it in. Um, anyways, I hope that you learned something here today and uh, it's valuable to you. If you like it, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.